deep. I'd like to hear what you thought um, when we got we got some notes on the Six Day War book, Lionsgate. You mean a lot after we turned it in. After we turned it in to the publisher. Yeah. Well, first of all, you wrote the book. You sent it to me. We did our editorial thing, which you know we always do, and then we turned it in. They loved the book, full excitement about it, but they had some notes. And one of the notes I know struck you, sort of, uh, you know, it was sort of like a gut punch. Yeah, right, yeah. And um, I'm just wondering why it was such a gut punch to you and why it was so important. And this is about uh, the importance of the War of Independence, Israel's War of uh -huh. Independence, and why that matters in the Six Day War. What, what does it matter? What happened? It's like saying, "Oh, what happened in War War One really has a major impact on War War Two, and it does, and it doesn't." Right. So this is a, this is a great question because it really goes to um, how theme is so important. This this issue that you and I are always harping on, and um, the, the I, I knew that the emotional climax of this book had to be when the Israeli paratroopers captured and liberated the Western Wall, the Wailing Wall of the Temple of Solomon's Temple in Jerusalem. So it was then very important. This is a, a thing that you and I always say: start at the end and work backwards. Right. So knowing what the climax is, it had to be set up for the reader throughout the book why this is important. So there had to be story. We had to somewhere. I had to tell the story of Solomon's Temple being destroyed by the Babylonians and the Romans, creating the diaspora, et cetera, et cetera. And I had to. You know, set up the the importance of, of the wall and the loss of Jerusalem and that. You had to all, raise all the stakes. Sort of stuff, right? You had to build. Right. Yeah. So, in other words, it wasn't random what interview number one was or page one or page six, page seven. Things were being laid in. Setups were being laid in so that they would pay off at the end of the book. And one of the things that was very important was. We couldn't just start in 1967 because th this is for an American audience, yes. and, and they don't know. They don't right. even know about the Six Day War existed, let alone what happened and what preceded it. And I know they don't know because I didn't know. Right. You know, when, when I went over there. So getting back to the notes that came back from the publisher, there were a couple of uh, chapters early on in the book about Lou Lenart, who was my sort of the guy that David Mamet introduced me, the mm -hmm. godfather of the book that the book is dedicated to. But that they wanted, the publisher wanted, as you know, to cut that. Yeah, let's they just said, go right to the six. We don't need that. Yeah. You know, it's this. The story's about the Six Day War. Why do we want to have to talk about the, this war that was, you know, in 1948? And uh, that was one where you'd fall on your sword over it. You know, and I know that uh, we talked about that, that. That that was the one where we're ready to pull the plug and give them their check back. You know, right, right. Um, because the Six Day War m would mean nothing if you didn't know. What the antecedents for it exactly. were for. I mean, what you did in the book is you didn't just do the War of Independence and the Six Day War. There was the Sinai campaign in between there, and it's sort of like how we talk about full scap, beginning, middle, and end. Right. Those were sort of the first three acts of Israel's history, you know, and they happened in a period of 20 years. Yeah, 19 years. Yeah. Uh, this is a this is an example where you want to put in pieces of the past into a smaller story. Don't make them huge, but pick your shots, stick them in there so it lays the groundwork so it'll pay off at the end. There were no Israeli fighter pilots who had any combat experience. We don't know if these pieces of shit plane. will even fly, you know? So no, Lou, you don't understand. <laughs> you gotta stop them right now, because if we don't stop them where they are right now, they're in Tel Aviv tonight, and that's the end of Israel.